Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the Unite Unity Developer Conference is going on right now in Barcelona and today I'm going to cover some of the major highlights, the major announcements from the keynote and we're going to start with something that was actually already announced. Probably the biggest announcement of all that Unity could make is, remember that really stupid thing they did about a year ago with the runtime fee? Well, they got rid of that. And so uh, Matthew Bromberg took the stage, he's the new CEO, started about three months ago and he talked about how Unity lost their way and the good first step is to get get rid of that runtime fee. But instead of like chasing every dog, everything that will make Wall Street happy, they're going to focus on game development. Now, of course, we have heard that before, but it is good to hear it again. So hopefully this new focus is something that happens. On top of that, we got a couple of announcements about Unity 6. Now, we already knew all about Unity 6 and the new features here. If you want to learn more about it, I covered that in individual videos as well. Uh, but we do have a release date now. So we know Unity 6 is going to be coming on October the 17th. A big thing about Unity 6 too, no runtime fee. So there doesn't have to be this massive fear about going ahead and adopting Unity 6 because it's basically going to be the latest and greatest version with no major downsides in terms of, you know, gotchas. Uh, it's going to be the biggest and most stable release they have ever done to date. Uh, they intend to support it for a long time. And another thing that they've announced here is they're actually going to be doing less major releases. So they're going to have Unity 6 for a longer instead of doing like the annual 2022, 2023, 2024 type releases. They're going to do Unity 6 and then 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, more, um, more gradual releases. And those releases are going to have a migration path so you can actually use them. It's one of those things that Unity has struggled with for ages. So they're going to have a release schedule that actually encourages people to update and then have tools in place for migrating from 6 to 6.1 and so on going forward. Nice to see that. They also released a little stat that was interesting. They said in 2023, 90% of games on Steam used scriptable rendering pipelines. That would be the URP ERP and the HDRP uh, pipelines, while 50% of mobile titles released in 2023 use scriptable render pipelines. So uh, basically the built-in pipeline is more or less coming to end of days, uh, at least as far as new releases are going. Uh, they also had something, they announced this at GDC, or they used it as a demo uh, last year at GDC, their uh, Fantasy Kingdoms. Um, they're actually bringing this as a URP sample. This is a Cinti Power demo. Uh, it is going to be coming to the Unity Asset Store next month, uh, and it will be free for non-commercial use. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and check out that demo, you can. Another thing they mentioned alongside this, this actually happened a couple of days ago. Uh, do you remember that Unity owns Speedtree? Yeah, Unity owns Speedtree. Now, interestingly enough, they don't do much with it. Speedtree is a real-time tree technology. They continue to update it, but they don't really take advantage of owning these external companies that much. Well, Speedtree 10 is now available. Now, the next up part is definitely uh, some very nice eye candy. This is Time Ghost. Now, these are uh, real-time cinematic rendering demos that the Unity teams put together. The whole idea behind this is sort of a dog fooding thing. Now, personally, I would rather see them do dog fooding via actual games instead of these real-time presentations. This seems more like the realm of um, Unity, of Unreal Engine more so than Unity, to be honest, at least to me. Uh, this is an HDRP demo running in real time on a 4090. Uh, this is kind of the same team that brought us Book of the Dead, Adam, Heretic, Enemies, and the Blacksmith. And we're actually going to start seeing a trickle of the assets that were used uh, in this demo coming in the future, uh, which is, again, an encouraging and nice thing to see. Um, let me know what you think of these uh, these real-time cinematic demos. Again, last year it was Enemies. Uh, the year before that, I think it was a Blacksmith. Um, again, it feels more like an Unreal Engine thing to me, but I'd be curious to hear what you have to say about that. I do like to see them dog fooding, though. That is the idea of using your own product to create products so you can find the pain points and the problems there. And that is one of those things you get out of something like Time Ghost. Uh, on top of that, uh, Unity 6.1 has been announced. Now, this goes back to a little bit what I was talking about earlier on. We're going to have incremental but smaller updates, um, and this one is going to ship next year. We don't know specifically when, keeping in mind that Unity 6 is only shipping in, like, October the 17th. So don't expect anything, like, immediately, uh, but they are going to be a more frequent update. So they're also, again, going to make it easier to migrate your projects between the versions. Now, one of those things about being smaller updates that people can actually 
actually use is you're actually going to have a smaller amount of content in each one of these updates. So what are the highlight features that we know about for Unity 6.1? Well, the first one I like because frankly, I just got one of these and that is support for foldable phones as well as large screen formats in mobile. So um, that is a new area they're going with. Another area for graphics side of things is they are going to add deferred plus rendering to the new uh, GPU, GPU resident drawer. Now the GPU resident drawer is a new rendering technique in Unity 6. It should give you um, just basically faster frame rates for free. So they're gonna add deferred plus rendering support in that. Um, and then they're also going to be adding new build targets uh, like the MetaQuest. So I'm assuming MetaQuest 3 or whatever the heck the next version is, it's going to be supported in the 6.1 version. And then we got into probably the biggest slash small announcement of them all. I was curious if they were going to do this. I've actually known about this for a little while uh, and they've done a good job of keeping it under wraps, but they kind of talked about the future of Unity. Now they never called it Unity 7 and who knows if this is going to be Unity 7 and I somewhat applaud them for not over promising a bunch of crap early on, uh, but I think Unity 7 is going to be a pretty big generational shift for Unity. It's been under development for well over a year. I've talked to some developers on the Unity team and they're actually really excited about this build. Uh, and what they're doing here is they're kind of taking all of the technologies that they've added in a modular manner. I, I actually think that they've kind of come to the realization that this modularity that they announced was a bad idea. So we did things like they added the dots or the data oriented technology stack, all those various different things like the burst compiler and ECS and all that. And they were all brought in as various different modules that are interdependent on each other. Well, with Unity 7, those are all going to be built into the core. So you're going to see uh, ECS is built in and you're you're still going to have a game objects layer on top of it. So you just benefit from the performance of these features. Uh, and it's, it's kind of nice. So instead of having this mishmash of um, pipelines and modules and plugins and trying to get it all to work together, it's going to just be integrated directly into the core of Unity 7. Speaking of core, uh, they're also going to move from mono to core CLR. Now the bad news there is I think some people were hoping for core CLR support in Unity 6, not gonna happen. So it's gonna be the future version of Unity is gonna be built around um, core CLR going forward. Now the good thing about using core CLR from day one means that as um, new versions of .NET are released, C Sharp 12, 13, 14, and so on, they'll be immediately there. You should also get some performance ramifications from going from the mono runtime to the core CLR runtime going forward. And probably the biggest of them all, and this was very, very minorly said, but in the roadmap they followed up a little bit more, goodbye multiple render pipelines. Yes, so we're gonna not have the multiple reference pipelines. We're gonna have one pipeline to rule them all. And I imagine it's gonna have multiple scaling abilities. So the idea of an ERP in the HDRP you're still going to have programmable pipelines, but you're not going to have to support two sets of them with the tool chain. And realistically, as the URP got more and more of the functionality of the HDRP, this just, it never made sense, to be honest. It was one of those areas where they, they added complexity and they never really got anything back for it. So uh, we're going to go back to, again, all of the core technologies that have been adding, things like... Um, Again, Burst Compiler and ECS and all that are gonna be built directly into the core of the engine. We are going to move from mono to core CLR. And again, the pipelines are going to merge back into a single thing to work with. Now, this is gonna have a pretty profound effect on the ecosystem, on the asset store and everything else. Be interesting to see where this one goes. And if I get more information about Unity 7 uh, details from Unite this year, uh, I will hopefully do a dedicated video on that. Cause I think that's probably the most interesting thing to a lot of you. So let me know what you think of Unite 2024. Again, the biggest announcement came just before it. They got rid of the stupid runtime fee. They do seem to have a good focus on game development. Let's see if they could keep it going. Cause at the end of the day, they still are a publicly traded company with all of the faults of being a publicly traded company, uh, something that, you know, uh, Unreal Engine and Godot don't have to deal with. So hopefully the corporate Wall Street masters don't screw anything up and this new focus and direction that they've got going stays because for the most part, everything I heard today was pretty positive. So I'm curious what you think. Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.